World AIDS Day will be celebrated tomorrow, the 1st of December, at the Dobsonville Stadium in Soweto. Deputy President David Mabuza, as the chairperson of the South African National AIDS Council, will deliver a keynote address at the commemoration event. Uh, Professor Linda Gale Becker, HIV scientist and deputy director of the Desmond Tutu HIV Center at the University of Cape Town, joins us via Skype from Cape Town. Professor Becker, thank you so much for joining us on the Globe and a very warm welcome. Now, you're part of a bigger strategy um, working to reduce the incidence of sexually transmitted infections, including HIV among girls and young women. Does this problem still pose a bigger challenge um, that the fight against HIV AIDS is faced with? I think it does, Lulu. I think we are uh, battling uh, in ineffective tools in order to pre prevent HIV in, in individuals. So, you know, for many years all we had was abstinence, behavioral uh, mechanisms such as uh, single partners, and condoms and and really that hasn't given young women sufficient tools to make sure that they could protect themselves we are in the midst of a prevention revolution and more tools are coming down the pike and hopefully we'll be able to strengthen the armamentarium for young women to look after themselves and prevent hiv in their own their own bodies now, Prof, how far has society succeeded in challenging um, problems like uh, stigmatization and discrimination? Well, I think one of the, the biggest or the hardest nuts to crack has been stigma and discrimination. And in fact, I'm really disappointed that 35 years into this epidemic, we are still really struggling with the fact that people find it difficult to step forward to test they're very anxious to know the results of their test and, of course, find it difficult to access treatment and prevention options because they perceive um, external stigma or indeed internalized stigma. And so I think society still, and particularly a society in South Africa, has to work hard to normalize this infection, to make it uh, much more something that people can cope with and adjust to uh, as, a, as a normal uh, sort of part of life so that people can access the services that they need. But in terms of uh, the stigmatization and discrimination, what seems to be the problem? Where is the disconnect in, with understanding what uh, HIV AIDS is? I think people still perceive this uh, very much linked to sexual promiscuity, uh, perhaps to amoral behavior, um, somehow having made a mistake in their lives. Um, you know, it's an infection. It's a sexually transmitted infection. There is treatment. There is way. There are ways to prevent it. Um, and so I think we have to change our discourse and think about this in a very different way. Um, and that really requires um, all parts of society to step forward and say, what can we do as, as a society as a whole uh, to make this very much more something that is uh, a health issue and not a moral issue? Prof, while well, great strides have been made in combating HIV challenges um, with, uh, for example, the use of uh, prevention like pre-exposure uh, prophylaxis, can we confidently say that uh, society is taking advantage of these interventions and uh, measures to protect themselves? I don't think we're quite there yet. I think the, uh, you know, awareness is always something that we can improve on. It, the old adage, knowledge is power, is a very real and very, uh, very relevant to today. So every individual in South Africa should make every effort to know exactly what their status is and then what their options are. Everybody needs to do something regardless of what the result of their, uh, their HIV test is. If they're positive, they should access treatment immediately. If they're negative, they should find out more ways to stay negative. And, and we now do have options. Um, so I think it really does behoves everyone 
in society to um, know more about HIV. Now, experts have called for an end to laws that can see HIV positive people jailed for exposing others to the virus. Can you explain that? Yes, I think any uh, law, whether it is around same sex uh, sexual activity, uh, sex work, uh, use of illicit drugs uh, through needles, or indeed um, exposure of intimate partners with knowledge of HIV in that individual, all of those laws that drive individuals underground or, or mean that they don't access services because they are fearful of their own safety, well-being, um, ability to access those services, those work against public health uh, good sense, if you like. Mm -hmm. And so all of those laws should be reconsidered in the light of public health. Now, something we know that is when somebody is on treatment and they're taking that treatment well, in other words, when their virus is undetectable, then there is very little chance that they will transmit the virus to somebody else. So the laws that prohibited people from having intimate relations with others without disclosure of HIV are actually now no longer relevant because as long as that individual is undetectable, they are unlikely to be infectious to somebody else. And so we need to move in terms of our legal framework with the science and the science has indeed moved on. How far are we from a cure? I'm afraid still some way to go. Um, I'd like to be more optimistic, but this virus is, um, is difficult. It has many ways of evading the immune system, um, and we have not yet uh, found a way to cure anybody. There's one individual in the world who probably has actually been properly cured, but otherwise, in every other instance, uh, we have got a little closer to understanding how to control the virus. Uh, we may be a little closer to knowing how to create a vaccine to the virus, uh, but the cure continues to elude us. Not to say we shouldn't continue to search for that cure, and I think it's important that uh, scientists around the world should continue to do so. And how did they manage to get it right with that particular person and with regards to the cure? What, what was his, in his system or his antibodies? How, can you explain that? Yes, so uh, an extraordinary story, a man who had been infected with HIV, um, developed a cancer, needed to have a bone marrow transplant, and the scientists and doctors who did that bone marrow managed to uh, replace his, his uh, bone marrow with genetically modified uh, germ cells that when his immune system was reconstituted, meant that the virus was unable to take hold. Um, he needed to have a subsequent bone marrow and uh, then subsequently was able to actually, if you like, sort of kick the virus out of his body. But that was a very long road and a very dangerous process. So not something we would think about uh, doing on large scale, as you can imagine. Um, the man's name is Timothy Ray Brown. He's very well known. Uh, viewers can uh, can Google that and see more about his wonderful story, but unfortunately not something we've been able to replicate, but gives us some hope that maybe this is something uh, we can pursue and and find other ways to emulate in order to find a cure. In terms of uh, World AIDS Day tomorrow, um, you know, what are your plans with regards to um, the day and, uh, you know, educational-wise in terms of what are you going to be doing to continue um, sending that message across to the people of South Africa and the world? My message is one of hope. HIV 30 years ago was a despairing, uh, desperate situation. People had no option but to face death. We now have great options. Our options are test so that you know whether you need to be treated. If you're treated, your lifespan can be restored as long as you take your treatment every day. If you test negative, there are ways to stay negative. Um, and everybody needs to know that. So I spend my World AIDS Day making sure that as many people as I know, know that they need to be tested and that they too 
uh, can treat HIV as a very manageable uh, situation in, in our country, even though we have one of the greatest burdens in the world. Professor Becker, thank you so much for joining us. We'll leave it there for now. And that was Professor Linda Gale uh, Becker, HIV scientist and deputy director of the Desmond Tutu HIV Center at the University of Cape Town.